been a while since I've used my Zig Clean Colour Real Brushes, but as soon as I saw this stamp from Crafty Meraki, I thought it'd be the perfect image to colour in. Today I'm using the newly released Hello Love stamp set from Crafty Meraki, and I'm creating this beautiful card. Welcome to the Meraki Anniversary One Year Celebrations. We're here celebrating Crafty Meraki's first birthday with a fun video hop and giveaway. So as I mentioned, I am using the Hello Love stamp from Crafty Meraki, which has been released today. It is a beautiful Hello floral image. So it's got the word Hello in the middle, nice and bold, with all the florals around the outside. And it also comes with some great bold sentiments to go with it. Now, because I saw this beautiful stamp, I knew I had to heat emboss it. I love to heat emboss florals. And because I was going to use my watercolour brush markers, my Zig Clean Colour markers, I thought they would work really well with the gold embossing. So I'm just stamping this onto some watercolour cardstock. Because these will be water-based markers, it's best to use it on a cardstock that allows them to move and blend together. So once I'd stamped it in embossing ink, I'm then covering it in embossing powder. So I'm using a super fine metallic gold embossing powder. And as you can see, this has stamped beautifully. These stamps are made so well that it stamps and keeps all that detail so well, even when you use embossing powder. And super fine embossing powder helps keep that detail as well. So I'm using my heat gun just to mount all that gorgeous detail. Nobody ever gets tired of watching embossing powder melt, turning from that dull colour to that beautiful shiny metallic. And as you can see, it absolutely looks stunning. So as I said, I'm using my Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers to colour this image in. Now I will list in my blog the actual colours I use. You will be able to find a blog link in the description box below. Now I start off by colouring in with the light colour on the areas of the pestle where I want the lighter shade to be. Then go in with a middle, a middle tone blue, and then I start working this towards the base of the petal, towards the inner of the flower. And then lastly, I'll go in with a darker blue where I will have the shadows and also towards the inner of the flower where it's at its most darkest. Once I've layered those colours down, I then go back in the reverse order, so I go back to that middle blue and start blending between it. Now, as I mentioned, I've used watercolour cardstock here, as these are water-based markers. This really allows the colours to blend with one another, so you get a lovely smooth transition. I then go back in with the lightest one to blend out the middle blue and the light blue, and you'll get this beautifully shaded petal that it's so easy to achieve. And what I love about using these markers is you get that really bright, intense, vibrant colour because you are using these as a marker. Now you can water these down, add the colour and then use a bit of water to blend it and you'll get a slightly uh, more diluted and more lighter version of this, of this painting. However, I wanted the vibrancy with this this design and kept them as is. So I've slowed it down here because I want to show you how I coloured the inner of these flowers. And I'm going in with a dark brown towards the base and then I'm going in with a slightly sort of softer brown, a bit more of a yellowy brown. And then I'm going in with a full yellow, sort of an orangey yellow. Now I'm using circular motions because I want to give that sort of texture it's not a completely smooth blend and this circular motion helps blend the colours but gives a little bit more interest. And so I transition out to yellow and I just wanted to show you that nice and slow so you can see how it's done. I am going to speed forward a bit to where more of the floral is coloured in just to show you how I coloured the leaves in as well. A very similar process to how I coloured in those petals. I'm using a selection of greens and again, I'm going from a dark green at the base and I'm using a light green at the bottom. This time I'm just going in reverse order. I've gone from dark to green. So you really, you can do whatever preference you prefer, but you just want to make sure that you really blend between the colors. As you can see, I colored the remainder of the flowers all in blue. I just went for a blue theme. I thought it would pop with that gold embossing. 
Then I've got the beautiful greens of the leaves and for the berries I just use a red selection of colour just to add a little bit of contrast and interest. Now I didn't want to leave the hello as is and I didn't want to colour it in with my Zig Clean Colour Real Brush Markers. I wanted to continue that gold embossing and that gold theme into the sentiment. So I'm using my also new metallic 14 pan watercolour set and I'm using one of the golds that matches really really well with the embossing powder so it's sort of one of the yellow golds and I'm just adding water to the pan and then painting in each of the letters. Now I did do one layer of the gold on all of the letters and it looked really really good but I wanted a really vibrant consistent gold so I did do a second layer as well. As you can see that when it catches the light you get a beautiful shine in that gold sentiment and it looks absolutely stunning. I fussy cut this out just as a simple outline I really loved how it looked and as you can see there is so much detail in this beautiful stamp all that intricacy of those flowers and leaves and petals surrounding that bold sentiment. Now to finish this card off I'm using one of the sentiments from the stamp set. Now these are all block kind of sentiments. They stamp out black and leaving the negative of the word white and they stamped really really well. This was the first stamping of this sentiment. I hand conditioned it and I just stamped it in black and it stamped beautifully. Now I foam mounted the floral onto the front of the card and then as you can see I was repositioning the sentiment all over the place to figure out where I liked the look of it the best. So it was just keeping that in just to show you that we can be indecisive as well. We aren't always completely sure as to how we want to do it. So to finish this card off, I'm just adding a few gold sequins, scattering it around the floral. Now as part of this video hop, there we are celebrating Crafty Maraki turning one and we are celebrating with a fun hop filled with plenty of inspiration using a variety of Crafty Maraki's products. Crafty Maraki are also got a giveaway going on. As part of the giveaway there will be one lucky winner who will get $100 worth of Crafty Maraki products. To enter you need to follow myself as well as Crafty Maraki's YouTube channel. Like and comment along the way. The more comments you leave, the more chances you have to win. And you'll find the next hop in the video in the description box below, along with all the full details of the giveaway. If you're new to my channel, why not think about subscribing and you can hit that bell icon to be notified when my next video is up. Until next time, happy crafting!